In today's video, we will look at our tiny little Darlingtonia seedlings that have come up. We've been growing them for about two months now and only now have they started to sprout. So let's look at them. Hello and welcome back to the fly trap garden. So a couple days ago, I was sitting outside, relaxing, just minding my own time, looking up at the sky, thinking about all the birds that fly around, listening to the trees, and obviously beautiful sounds that come from my neighbors, as you can hear. And obviously while I was relaxing outside, I stumbled upon this our bag that we put here. Inside, we have at least one sprout of Darlingtonia seedlings. And these are plants that we started together about two months ago from seed. And we put them in the fridge for four weeks. And now they're starting to sprout. And I wanna share that with you guys. Let me just get it up for you guys. So you see, seeing as they are just babies, they're just gonna continue peeing themselves, um, as you can obviously tell. So let's try to shake as much pee out of them. And then hopefully I can show you guys them up close now. And here we have all of our tiny Darlingtonia seedlings that you can very clearly see right through this bubble wrap. Now, the reason why we have this bubble wrap is because if you've been following our videos, you'd know that we needed this bubble wrap to cover up our seedlings and we didn't have a ziplocs because the world is the way it is right now and all the ziplocs were out and also didn't want to go to the shops just for a ziploc so we made this anyway they're in this bag now and they've started to grow so obviously i'm sure you guys want to see them so let's take it off there we go you guys can see that there is indeed at least one sprout um the other day i counted 15 but I don't know if that's correct or not. But anyway, I don't wanna keep them out for too long because they are not fully acclimated to the decreased amounts of humidity. That's why we actually put them in the bag so the humidity can stay high. But anyway, let's put this back on and let's talk a bit about it. So these plants, they are native to, I think, Western North America. So around California and I think Oregon, is that like somewhere the, on the left? I think it is. Anyway, as you know, they make these huge tall peters, peters? pitches, sometimes up to two meters in height. I mean, two feet in height. That's, that's obviously a very big difference. And what makes them so unique is that the top of the pitches form this, that round head with the two little, you know, leaves sticking out basically, which are, actually nectar secreting organs and that attracts all the insects which will eventually fly into them and eat them and obviously we have at least two here so we have quite a lot of plants coming up that we will be able to grow together they simply grow in a mixture of sphagnum and perlite i put them in the fridge for four weeks in little bags with chopped up sphagnum and um, you guys should really check out that video so you know exactly what i'm talking about and you keep them in the fridge because what happens is that after summer, it's really, really hot and they just want to relax for a bit, go on a ski trip. They want to feel the snow, feel a little bit cold so they can have a little bit of a winter's rest, kind of like a holiday sort of thing. And that's why you have to give them those four weeks before they start their new life as Darlingtonia seedling. It's very easy to start them from seeds. As you know, we did it together very easily give them their little holiday, make sure that they have enough water in their little bags. And after the four weeks, put them in their pot. So this is a small pot. It's about nine centimeters in height, I think. And it's literally just sphagnum and perlite, a mixture of one is to one, mix it all up, put it in the pot. And in a super, super deep water tray, as you saw that the water trays, they were like up to here, and the pot is here, up to here. And that just shows you how much water you need to give them while the ceilings, because they need to have a lot of water because they're really, really thirsty and they need to throw out their little roots and catch all the water. So now you're wondering, why do I have this ugly ass bag on and when can I take it off? Well, as I said, they needed it for their humidity. The humidity has to stay high so that they don't dry out and die. 
like I said, they're super thirsty. That's why we give them so much water. And it's been about four weeks or so since I put them outside. And the bag now, I have them folded over just like that, half open, so that the humidity can come in and out. In about two days, I will have the, the bag straight up like that. In about another three days, I'll cut the bag in half. Another three days, take it off, and I can put them outside with all the other plants. And that should be when the first cotyledons come out. So those are the first tiny little leaves that come out. And I'm super, super excited to see those little leaves come out because it means they are going to start eating some of the bugs that keep biting us. But what about watering them? I hear you asking. Well, it's very simple. Just like every other carnivorous plant, they need nice, clean water. That means reverse osmosis water, distilled water, or rain water. And the reason why they need to have such clean water is because they like to clean their palates. As I explained to you, they like their ski holidays, they're quite fancy, and they need the clean water to clear their palates so that they can eat each and every new fly that they catch. On a real note, they are native to areas which have slow moving water underneath their roots, and this takes away all the nutrients. Obviously, if we give them too many nutrients, they will literally burn up and die and we don't want that to happen to our seedlings especially because they're so unique but anyway as i said these are little seedlings that we've grown together now from seeds we have about 15 seeds that from what i've counted that are busy germinating right now which is an absolutely amazing amount of darlingtonia because these guys are super super difficult they say to grow in cultivation and to look after but we will try it ourselves. We're gonna keep them in this pot. We're gonna put them straight outside, get them acclimated to the Australian sun and weather so that we can have them in our garden and share it with everyone when they finally grow big enough that we can, you know, obviously sell them and give them to people and trade them and everything. They'll be grown nicely outside and that they won't have to have any special care requirements, which so many people talk about. Some people grow them in terracotta pots inside of another terracotta pot. And this helps to evaporate the liquid within the pots and this keeps the pots cool because as i said they like the cool water along their roots but to do all of that stuff is quite difficult what the most that i will do is cover the pot in foil uh, like you've seen in our previous video just to keep the sunlight rays off of the roots um, but other than that they will be growing in the pots just like all the other ones no other special care because i want to make sure that they can just grow without us having to do too much extra work because that starts to become a little bit tedious and we lose the enjoyment from it. Now, you may also be wondering how the hell do they actually catch their prey? Well, remember I told you about the little domes? If you look there nice and closely, you can actually see that the domes have these tiny white see-through windows on the top of these domes, which we'll just call the head. So on their heads, they have see-through windows. So you can look inside and see they have no brains because they are plants. But anyway, when an insect climbs up the bottom of the head, sorry, as I said, it's just the beautiful sounds of my neighbors. When the insect climbs up those little leaves that secrete the nectar at the front and up the hole at the bottom, they start eating all the nectar and they, then they decide, oh man, I'm so full now. I could really just fly home and take a quick nap. So what they do, they look up, they're like, hell yeah, that's my way home. Fly up, right into that window, hit themselves in the heads, get a concussion, and fall straight down the tube that is the body of the snake, the pitcher plant, the cobra lily. And in this body, they get digested and dissolved and eaten and turned into energy for the carnivorous plants to continue growing and making some more amazing two foot tall carnivorous pitches. And when you have flies this size just literally dead right next to you, like not joking, this big ass thing was literally about a foot away from you, just dead on the floor. You will be super glad to have plants such as the Darlingtonia to eat and kill those things before they eat your own blood. So let's take one more look of all the different seedlings before we put them back. You can see how many there are right in the center. I can see at least five. Another three to the top left, another four or five to the bottom left. One at the top. You can see two in the right, one at the top right, one at the bottom right, one right at the bottom. So we've got quite a few Darlingtonia seeds here. Now we have to go put them back into their cot because they still need to grow their first little leaves before they can do anything. 
So there we go, guys. We just had a little bit of an update on our Darlingtonia seeds that are coming up. A little bit of a silly video, a little bit short, I know. But I thought it was a good way just to update you guys. I'm trying to do about one video every day. And that means that some of the videos might be a little bit short, a little bit silly. Um, or maybe I'll make them two per week, or maybe a little bit more, a little bit less. Let me know what you think, what kind of content you like. Do you enjoy these silly videos? Do you enjoy more of the more serious videos where I just walk around and talk facts about them? Or would you like a little bit more lighthearted? Let me know exactly what you'd like to see in the channel and I'll be sure to, be, to make that for you guys. And here she is, back in her crib with a lot of water so she can cleanse her palate before she starts growing. And these are actually our Saracenias here, one, two. They've just started to crack and as you can see, they're open like that so that they can get the air in. The seeds are just starting to crack open now and send out their first roots. So I will be updating these guys in about three or four weeks as well when they start growing their first cotyledons. But anyway, all of these pots here, they are still yet to germinate. Don't know why they're taking so long, but yeah, they are still germinating. I think it's because they might need a little bit of a winter dormancy. And over here we have our tuberous seedlings starting to come up. So hopefully you guys can see these Drosera guniana right there. And we have some others coming up, some Drosera auriculata. I'm not going to show you them because it's quite difficult to see that. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this update on our Darlingtonias. And let me know what you like. So thank you guys. Bye.